Welcome. Hello, my name is Carlene Arnick Pate, and I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for Sonoma Media Investments. We are the locally owned company that brings you both online and in print the Press Democrat, the North Bay Business Journal, Sonoma Magazine, and a number of other publications and websites that help you stay informed and connected to your community. Today, on behalf of the North Bay Business Journal, I look forward to honoring some amazing female professionals from throughout our region. And I'm super happy to be doing this with one of my favorite local female professionals, someone who happens to be my coworker. She's the publisher of the Sonoma Index Tribune and the Petaluma Argus Courier. Welcome, Emily Sherrier. Thank you so much, Carlene. I'm so excited to be here with you today to help recognize these fierce, fabulous female leaders, our women in business winners who have wide reaching impacts in our local communities. These executives and professionals demonstrated extraordinary leadership qualities, especially throughout this current climate of ours. And you know, this year's selection was so difficult. I served on the committee myself. I know firsthand how hard it was. We had nearly 100 accomplished nominees to review. And as you can imagine, because of the pandemic, all the nominees overcame challenges tied to the shelter in place restrictions. I mean, we all did, right? So although we did consider the unique pandemic narratives, we also looked for the work and leadership that was developed outside of the pandemic challenges of the past year. We put a lot of attention on innovation and did our best to, to select visionaries. We identified women who are successfully breaking through traditional workplace barriers and women who are leading the way for others. Please know every nominee shared was sincerely worthy. We had to make some very tough choices, and we'd like to thank all of you who took the time to nominate your deserving candidates. We'd also like to thank our sponsors because none of this would be possible without them. So a great big thank you to our underwriter, Wells Fargo, and our award sponsors, Exchange Bank, Kaiser Permanente, and Redwood Credit Union. We also wanna share with you that we'll be closed captioning this event, but if you'd like to turn that off, all you gotta do is click on that live transcript icon at the bottom of your screen and then click hide subtitles. Okay, before we move into our awards presentations, I'd like to introduce Angie Salsa Rivera. Angie is a Sonoma County District Manager for Wells Fargo, and she's going to officially welcome you to the North Bay Business Journal's 2021 Women in Business Awards. Greetings. My name is Angie Souza Rivera, District Manager for Wells Fargo Bank in Sonoma County. Wells Fargo is honored to celebrate with you at the 21st Annual North Bay Business Journal's Women in Business Awards. We're also glad to sponsor the event. This event is about celebrating the achievements of women business leaders, innovators, and visionaries from the North Bay. I know that these are challenging times for many. Wells Fargo knows that we must be part of the solution to help small businesses and communities recover. Because small businesses are such an economic force, Wells Fargo launched the Open for Business Fund, a roughly 420 million philanthropical event investments created by donating all of our PPP gross processing fees to help entrepreneurs stay open and support local jobs. Here at the North Bay, we've donated $13 million to six community development financial institutions to provide women and diverse entrepreneurs with increased access to flexible capital and training. The Open for Business Fund is already helping a projected 22,000 minority-owned small businesses maintain an estimated 63,000 jobs nationwide. Notably, 84% of funding has gone to diverse small business owners. The Open for Business Fund will continue to award grants throughout this year and into 2022. Furthermore, we also have a resource site available that's called Wells Fargo Works for Small Businesses. This site provides resources, guidance, and services to help small businesses achieve their goals. This site is at www.wellsfargogoworks.com. 
I thank you all for your successes to date and for the challenges I know you will overcome. As we all collectively work to build our North Bay economy, you can count on Wells Fargo to be a local partner, just as you have since 1852. Thank you. Thank you, Angie and Wells Fargo. Now let's move on to the awards. The recipients were each asked to submit a 40 second video answering one of the following questions. We asked, what have they learned from this incredible time? How has it changed them? What message do they have for their friends, colleagues, and community? And how will the pandemic change life as they know it? Was there a single personal experience in this incredible time that they all wanna share with us? So these videos will be featured throughout the awards presentation, and I think you're going to enjoy them, and they'll help you get better acquainted with the awardees. And now to start us off, I'd like to introduce Sherry Demaris, who is both Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer with Exchange Bank, and will present the next two awards. Lisa Federici, CEO, ScanSite San Rafael. Lisa has been a vocal proponent of the 3D scanning industry since its inception. She started her company in 1991 and offered the first 3D scanning services in the U.S. Recognizing the difference that 3D could make in sectors ranging from aerospace to archaeology, she set her sights on bringing the technology to companies around the globe. Thanks to her efforts, 3D scanning is now routinely used as the first step to product manufacturing, as well as for art and museum conservation and restoration projects. Lisa is a testament to great leadership. She is inspiring, supportive, and likes to push the technology envelope to see what's possible. She gives freely of her time speaking at conferences and organizations such as the Society of Manufacturing Engineers and is particularly interested in supporting women working in non-traditional female industries such as manufacturing and technology. Congratulations, Lisa. Hello, my name is Lisa Federici and I'm the CEO of ScanSight. I thought I would take this opportunity to pass on a few things that I hope might help you on your own journey. Never think that you're dreaming too big and don't compare yourself to others. Learn how to accept failure as it is not your enemy, quitting is. And make time for your passion, even if it doesn't pay the bills and trust your gut. And when you do make it, and you will, stay humble. Best of luck. Jill Gaylord, President, Healdsburg Lumber Company and Hudson Street Design in Healdsburg. While many companies have struggled through the pandemic, Jill's leadership and guidance ensured that Healdsburg Lumber not only survived, but thrived. Her priority is always her employees and making sure they are safe, smiling, and successful, which became all the more important last year. By implementing cost-saving measures at the beginning of the shelter-in-place order, she was able to keep every single employee. She believes in investing in her staff because the company's success relies on them. Jill's business insight has led to steady increases in revenue over the last several years, including in 2020. This growth has made it possible for Healdsburg Lumber to build a brand new lumberyard, hardware store, and window and door showroom, which will open in 2022. Jill knows that the success of our community means the success of Healdsburg Lumber. The last several years have brought us one tragedy after the next, yet at every opportunity, she has prioritized supporting our community at every interval. Her philosophy is simple. If others stay in business, she will too. Congratulations, Jill. For us here at Healdsburg Lumber, the pandemic has forced us to improve technologically. Even those who are a little more resistant to technology and to change have really come around over the last year and we've seen our vendors offering new innovations that they've passed on to us and, and therefore that we've passed on to our customers and I think it's improved the way that we do business. I think that as a person it's made me more resilient. I feel like I don't sweat the small stuff as much as I did, particularly as it relates to my family schedule or what we're doing this weekend or next week. It's made us all a little more flexible. Thank you, Exchange Bank and Sherry, and congratulations to Lisa and Jill. The next award goes to Lorraine Ajo. 
Lorraine is a partner at Ajo Financial Forensics in Sonoma. She has built a forensic accounting firm from scratch that serves clients all over the world. Her 20-year-old firm serves the financial investigation needs of Olympic athletes, entertainers, recording artists, many other local and national celebrities. She is the only CPA, CFE, woman partner in a forensic accounting firm in the North Bay, and she combines a love of numbers with the complexities of investigations. Lorraine thrives on the investigative process. It leads from the people involved and then to the monetary misconduct at the heart of each matter. I find this so interesting. It's follow the money, right? She and her husband, Eric, launched and grew their, their, their firm together, and it's developed into an in industry-respected team of many principals, consultants, and specialized experts. Lorraine says that she often meets her clients on the worst day of their lives. And I mean, think about that. They've been embezzled, lied to, stolen from. Their trust has totally been shattered. So she uses trauma-informed care techniques to create a safe haven for her clients, provides them the space that they need to feel comfortable. Lorraine is a mentor for ACFE, that's Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Um, she mentors professionals interested in careers in forensics and fraud investigations. And, and she also mentors women who are starting their own firms. Congratulations, Lorraine. Hi, everyone. I'm Lorraine Ajo, Chief Spaghetti Untangler for Ajo & Associates Financial Forensics. I'm honored to receive a 2021 Women in Business Award from the North Bay Business Journal. What I've learned from the pandemic is that transparency and integrity are more important than ever in keeping our community safe and strong. Let's all strive to strengthen our honesty, our fairness, and our respect toward one another. The pandemic made us realize that we shouldn't take life for granted. Consider the words of the brilliant philosopher, Ferris Bueller. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. It's my pleasure now to honor Cecily Stock, who is the current head of schools for San Domenico down in San Anselmo. Back in 2003, she took her position at the school, which was an independent K-12 day and boarding program. As a 1977 alumna of the high school herself, Cecily cared deeply for San Domenico and she was determined that under her leadership, the school would not just survive, but thrive. Now, with her direction, the program is internationally recognized with a waiting list of students, not only from around the region, but from around the world, eager to get into her program and her education system. The demand for this school's program has increased by 75% since 2014. She's widely known in the industry as a visionary for leadership, transforming a struggling all-girls school into an in-demand co-ed program. Cecily has shown industry peers that change can happen, even at a 171-year-old institution. We all know how hard that change must have been. San Domenico is the largest employer of the Ross Valley region of Marin. Had the school closed, it would have meant job losses for 160 teachers, coaches, learning specialists, program administrators, and such, a huge loss for the community. But now instead, with Cecily's leadership, the school is a steady beacon in the community, even during the pandemic. Congratulations, Cecily, that's wonderful. And now I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Michael Schulman, who is the physician in chief of Kaiser Permanente to present our next award. Hello, my name is Michael Schulman. I'm the physician in chief of Kaiser Permanente in Santa Rosa. It is my honor and privilege to recognize Dr. Kendall Hammond as this year's North Bay Business Journal awardee for women in business in 2021. Dr. Hammond joined Kaiser Permanente in 2007 and became our chief of endocrinology in 2014. In 2018, she became our assistant physician in chief of outpatient quality and care experience. When the pandemic began last year, Dr. Hammond stepped up uh, as a very inspirational leader uh, to lead our response to the COVID pandemic. She helped lead our uh, vaccination program, as well as reaching out into our community to help take care of some of our most vulnerable patients at risk. 
when I think of Dr. Hammond as a leader, I think of an inspirational leader. I think of courage. I think of trust, dedication, commitment, always with an intense and unrelenting focus on taking care of our patients. So again, it's my honor and privilege uh, to recognize Kendall, and I wanted to send a big uh, thank you for all that you do. You are making a meaningful difference in the lives of our patients. My name is Kendall Hammond, and I am an assistant physician in chief at Kaiser Permanente in Santa Rosa. Thank you so much, North Bay Business Journal, for your generous recognition. I absolutely love the North Bay, and I'm thrilled to serve in a professional role that allows me to help others. My roots in the North Bay run deep. My grandfather was born in San Francisco and moved to Fairfax with his family as a child. My grandmother's family settled in the Santa Rosa area in the late 1800s. Myself, I grew up in Novato and after completing my medical education and training, my husband and I moved to the town of Pengrove where we are currently raising two wonderful teenagers. This past year forced us all to think about our place in this planet and our social values. It demanded of us that we think critically about every single thing we do and prioritize what is important. In my professional life, the circumstances of the pandemic yielded sharp focus on one thing, and that is service to my community. I will look back at this year and recall that it was an honor and a privilege to serve others and work alongside countless others who did the same. Lastly, I wanna say that I am grateful for my husband and children who support me and generously make space for my professional life alongside our family life. And I am grateful for the numerous mentors, colleagues, and friends who have encouraged me to take on new challenges and inspired me with their wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, Kaiser and Dr. Shulman. We're very appreciative that you took the time from your busy schedule for your personal presentation to Kendall and a big congrats, congratulations to Kendall. Okay, time for our next award. And this one goes to a real go-getter. Her name is Lindsay Hickman. She is the CEO of the Barn and Pantry in Dixon. Lindsay identified that her community was missing something. She felt they needed a farm to fork grocery store. And she set out to fill that gap. She had the connections with local farmers in the Solano County area. And from her viewpoint, the concept seemed simple and easy which is probably why she didn't stop developing it because her farm to fork grocery store quickly grew into a local masterful coffee shop. And then she created a full restaurant too. Prior to the pandemic and now moving forward, her restaurant offers free live music on Fridays. She teaches classes to her community about how to do simple home processes like preserving food and making bread, even craft classes. In pre-pandemic time, there wasn't a day on the barn and pantry's monthly calendar that wasn't filled with some type of family fun activity for her community. And, and I've heard that that calendar is filling up fast again now. Lindsay is making her own niche with her own ideas for community involvement. Oh, and by the way, I understand her, her ideas are, are endless. With her barn and pantry, she is connecting Dixon and Solano County residents with our amazing North Bay agricultural community. And I think that is certainly a, a worthwhile community connection. Congratulations, Lindsay. That's wonderful. Next up, it's my honor to present Benita McLaren, who you will hear has lived many, many lives in her time. Currently, she is the director of the Department of Health and Human Services for the County of Marin. Uh, she also served as Chief Operating Officer for Santa Clara Valley Medical Center in San Jose for over five years, and as Vice President of Ambulatory Health Services for Alameda Health System, as well as in senior positions at the Sonoma County Department of Health Services and the Solano County Health and Social Services Department. Whew, that's a mouthful. Um, uh, but before that, she served for 20 years on active military duty as a medical service corps officer with the United States Army. That included several overseas assignments to Germany and Korea, as well as deployment in Honduras, Bosnia, and Saudi Arabia. As a combat veteran, she retired as Lieutenant Colonel. That's incredible. 
The Army enabled Benita to get her master's in health policy and management at Harvard School of Public Health. Incredibly impressive. After retiring from the military, her passion for public health brought her to a series of prominent jobs in health throughout the Bay Area, which we've heard a bit about. In addition to that, she joins mentoring and supporting young people in their early careers. She is a, a board member and a mentor with the Bay Area I Mentor program and on the board of Partnership Health Plan of California. She also enjoys working in the community on the board of the Glad Tidings Community Development Corporation. And in addition to all of that, serves as coordinator in her church's community outreach program. I'm not sure when Benita sleeps, but she is definitely worthy of honoring with our Women in Business Award. Congratulations, Benita. Hello, my name is Benita McLaren. My message to my family, friends, colleagues, and community is thank you. I feel so fortunate to have had a career of service to others, especially during this unprecedented and challenging last year of the worldwide pandemic. To see the life-saving impacts of our Health and Human Services team and to have had the opportunity to serve with some of the most caring, selfless, and dedicated people in the world has been a true blessing of my life. Thank you, HHS. I also wanna thank my family and especially my dear mother for the many years of untiring support. And thank you, Cecilia, for this nomination. I dedicate this award to all who serve to make the world a better place. Thank you. And Benita, thank you so much for your service um, and all you, that you are continuing to do for, for your community. Our next awardee is a total dynamo. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Aaron Gore. Aaron is the founder and CEO of the Garden Society in Cloverdale. Aaron was recently named one of the most powerful and innovative women in cannabis by Forbes. Her California-based company serves women in search of new, more holistic ways to rejuvenate from the chaos of their daily lives. Um, she creates artisanal edibles and sun-grown pre-rolls that connects responsible farming, sustainable ingredients, and strain-specific cannabis in a variety of products. Garden Society stems from Erin's personal journey of striving to find balance in her own life as both a mom and entrepreneur and from being surrounded by women and feeling the same pressures. The company is built on the passion to encourage women to explore non-traditional ways of managing pain, anxiety, stress relief, as well as relaxation and joy. Who, who doesn't need more joy in, in their lives, right? So now four years old, Garden Society is flourishing and has become a well-rounded wellness brand ready to help women across the entire state of California. Erin serves as a board member for the National Cannabis Industry Association. She is an active member of the Northern California cannabis community and a contributor to Green Entrepreneur. She is a fearless advocate for women-owned cannabis businesses and equally dedicated to breaking the stigma and rewriting the script around the plant. Erin serves on the board of the International Cannabis Farmers Association. And locally, she, she works with the Healthcare Foundation of Northern California, um, I'm sorry, of Northern Sonoma County, as well as the Healdsburg District Hospital Board of Directors. She is also a member of the Sonoma County Growers Alliance, and she belongs to, to the Circular Board and the Collaborative Accelerator for women entrepreneurs. I'm impressed and exhausted by Erin's list of memberships. Um, she, she must have the energy of Wonder Woman. Congratulations, Erin. Hi, my name's Erin Gore, founder and CEO of Garden Society. Garden Society is a wine country cannabis company based in Cloverdale, helping women redefine their life with cannabis and find more joy. We're so honored to you included a cannabis company, included me here in this list with incredible women this year. Thank you. One thing I learned during the pandemic was the incredible need to stay present in the day and finding wins each day to celebrate. It was really overwhelming. And so really just focusing in the day and the tremendous progress we made across the year was inspiring to see. I was also really impressed with women's deep ability and grit when it came to just managing everything that the pandemic put on women. One message I have for our community and challenge is how we can really bring equity to the forefront and be better allies, both in our personal lives and our professional lives. And it's my challenge to all of us. 
And then finally, one thing I hope continues from the pandemic is this new um, ability and new found confidence to say no. Um, it's really brought a lot of peace and rest to my life and ability for me to draw healthier boundaries. So I really hope to continue that forward. Um, thank you so much and I look forward to celebrating everybody. Now I have the pleasure of introducing Brett Martinez. Brett is the president and CEO of Redwood Credit Union and will be personally presenting the next award. Today, it is my honor to recognize and congratulate Deirdre Thompson, our Senior Vice President of Virtual Service Delivery and a Woman in Business Award recipient. Deirdre is an admired leader and her unwavering dedication to serving our members inspires everyone around her. She is equally driven and empathetic, providing real solutions to those needing support, even in the most challenging times. Congratulations, Deirdre, from all of us at Redwood Credit Union. I'm grateful to receive this Women in Business Award and to have a minute to share something with you. During the pandemic, we all dealt with emotional whiplash, but it brought to focus some of the things that used to be seen as less important, like balance, the power of community, working together, seeing others for their gifts, and generally being kind. I want people to choose good and share that out in the world, even when you think you won't get it back. That's what I encourage our RCU team members to do every day, and I've seen the positive results. Not only in the high scores and love we receive from our members, but in the way we treat each other. When we embrace optimism, we all win. Congratulations, Deirdre. And now we're on to our final two awards of the night. It's my pleasure to tell you about Erin Neal, who is Chief Administrative Officer of Sutter Pacific Medical up in Santa Rosa. As you can imagine, in this pandemic year, she's probably had quite the go of it. She oversees 31 ambulatory clinics throughout Sonoma and Marin. She also develops strategies for how to best meet the healthcare needs of our community, opening new clinics, recruiting new specialists, and reorganizing and shifting resources as necessary to help provide patients with the right care in the right place at the right time. She currently oversees a budget of over $200 million and has grown the patient panel in Sonoma County by more than 9,000 patients. She also was successful in opening the Grove Clinic, which reduced emergency room visits by 80% and earned her the Sutter Health Affordability Award for the lowest cost per work unit in the Sutter Health system. Erin has steadfastly worked in a variety of capacities to serve our community and ensure high quality, affordable health care for residents of the North Bay. What is more critical than that in this year? She led her team in the creation of one of the most successful COVID vaccination clinics in the county, vaccinating thousands of residents per day. And if you read in those Press Democrat articles about how some of those clinics went, it's clear and so important that we have people like Erin running organized public health services for us. Virtually overnight, she had to completely change her business model and shift huge amounts of resources towards the pandemic, all while maintaining quality in ex her existing business lines. As we all learned this year, public health is nothing to joke about, and it's clear that Erin is taking care of all of us. Thank you, Erin, and congratulations. Hello, I am Erin Neal, the Chief Administrative Officer for Sutter Pacific Medical Foundation. What I have learned in this incredible time is that trust and collaboration is the only way to manage the crisis that we've been through in Sonoma County that touched so many lives starting with the wildfires and now with the pandemic. I am filled with gratitude to be surrounded by people whose first thought is how to help someone else. The partnerships that we have developed at Sutter Pacific Medical Foundation with our medical group leadership, our hospital and our community partners have shown that it takes a community to truly care for the community. Thank you so much. Alina Verona is our next awardee. She is Dean for the Workforce Development and Career Education at College of Marin in Novato. Alina's professional career demonstrates her commitment to working with culturally and economically diverse populations 
in career education, dual enrollment, non-credit, and special programs. All of these focus on strengthening connections for her students to educational opportunities. They support educational progression and ensure a meaningful transition to additional college and ultimately employment opportunities. As a first generation Latina, a former English language learner and a community college student, Alina remains committed to serving our talented and diverse community members. Those whose families are much like her own, students whose stories, challenges and triumphs often mirror those of her, her own community. As a member of the less than 1% of Latinx individuals with an advanced degree, she is aware of both the privilege and responsibility incumbent upon her to forge a path for others, to leverage her academic, economic, and identity-based privileges in support of this end. She has been working in education for about 15 years now, and most recently she was the Associate Dean of Career Pathways in the Strong Workforce Program at City College of San Francisco, and she led the creation of an equity-centered dual enrollment document for City College of San Francisco, and it has been recognized as a model by the Education Trust West, which is an organization committed to educational justice for all California students. In the spring of 2020, she completed a doctorate in education from the University of California in Davis. She is a Puente project mentor and Alina states, and now this is clear to all of us, she states that she is passionate about being a champion for academic and economic equity and ensuring that all students reach their educational and professional goals. Congratulations and thank you, Alina. You're doing very important work and I can't wait to see what you accomplish in the next 15 years. Hello, my name is Alina Verona and I'm the Dean of Workforce Development and Career Education at College of Marin. Thank you to the North Bay Business Journal for this unexpected honor. I'm humbled, I feel undeserving, and I'm even more encouraged to continue the work of championing academic and economic equity on behalf of our students and community members. This work year, like for so many others, was unorthodox to say the least. I joined College of Marin in the midst of a pandemic and I was live from my kitchen table trying to support and resource our instructors and students and colleagues as they engaged in socially distanced, meaningful career training. This was all at a time when workforce development was most critical, when the growing health, financial and academic disparities were glaring and our need to address them more urgent than ever. It's been both a challenging and a satisfying year. I'm so proud of the important work I was able to support, the positive impact we made on behalf of our students and community members, and the deeply caring and talented folks I have been privileged to work alongside with this past year. It's been a tremendous honor. Thank you so very much. What an incredible list of women. Congratulations and a virtual round of applause to this year's Women in Business Award winners. I know I speak for both Carlene and I when I say what a pleasure it has been to share their stories with you all this evening. And of course, we could not do it without our sponsors, our underwriter, Wells Fargo, and our award sponsors, Exchange Bank, Kaiser Permanente, and Redwood Credit Union. Emily, it was really fun to co-host with you. Thank you for joining me. And thanks to all of you for joining us and supporting these women, helping us recognize their value to their industries, companies, their coworkers, and most importantly, our communities. The next upcoming Business Journal event is the Wine Industry Virtual Conference planned for July 14th, and you can register on the Business Journal's website. Keep an eye out for the full Women in Business Award winners profiles in the June 28th printed edition of the North Bay Business Journal. They can also be found on the MBBJ's website. Thank you all again for being here and for supporting this event and this year's winners and for supporting the North Bay Business Journal. Have a great night.